All right, what's going on everyone? Captain, you're back with another Raid Shadow Legends video. If you missed my last one, uh, you guys want to check it out. I was talking all things clan boss, early act, early game clan boss. Gave my my best advice, which, you know, again, I'm only two months into the game, so might not have been the greatest advice. I might have messed up on some things, but I think it was a pretty good way to at least get you going in the right direction. But also make sure to stick around to the very end of that video. Uh, if you haven't watched it, go watch it now because you're about to get some spoilers. I opened up the Sacred Shards. There was a boosted summons for the Sacred Shard uh, to open them to potentially get a better legendary. And spoilers, I got two legendaries and both of them were absolutely amazing. So if you don't want to find out right now who they were, go back to that video, check it out, then come back to this one and finish it. Uh, and then today's video, though, we're going to be talking about another one of my legendary characters going to a full breakdown on Solus. But first off, guys, I want to give a huge shout out to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. If you are a brand new player to Raid Shadow Legends, go ahead, head on down into the description, click on that link, and if you are a brand new account, you will be receiving 100,000 silver along with a free four-star light sworn an awesome character you guys will get in game that will help you out a lot in the early stages but make sure to do it soon guys because this is only valid for the next 30 days so you want to make sure you head on in and get that and once you have downloaded the game with that referral link you will go up in game to the top right box here and your rewards will be sitting right here waiting for you to collect so make sure to do that in the next 30 days and then you can get yourself that hundred thousand silver along with the sacred order epic defense based character light sworn right here guys super like i said super useful in the early game lots of good abilities he's got here uh decreases the turn meter is very nice he has control in the fights de uh, places a decreased attack decreased speed so he's got the debuffs and he has a little bit of support on your allies increasing their defense and can revive them if they die so very very useful character guys so make sure again Huge shout out to Raid Shadow Legends. The link will be in the description, guys. Make sure to do it in the next 30 days and you'll get yourself these awesome rewards. But let's go ahead and dive into the video. This is going to be my first ever character breakdown video. So uh, let me know, guys, what you think, how I did at the end. Uh, I, I'd love to hear your feedback because obviously I've never done one of these for uh, Raid Shadow Legends. I've done some for my Marvel MCOC game, uh, but never for this game. So we'll see how this goes. Kind of just going to go off the top of my head and see how it ha see what happens uh so soul is here he is a void affinity legendary defensive base from the knight revenant faction uh so pretty cool stuff there I, I was really surprised when i got him one just like void characters are rare let alone getting a legendary out of them so i got him the last time there was a void uh actually no i didn't get him from there it was the time before there was a void boosted summons and then recently he was just as the featured character uh, in the next boosted summon so I already had him so I was like oh cool maybe uh, that's kind of why I decided to choose him for this because maybe there's some people out there who just pulled this character don't know a lot about him because when I pulled him you can see he doesn't have a ton of reviews but those reviews that are on him are pretty pretty good um, but when looking through videos online and everything I didn't see a ton of videos about him uh, and a lot of conflicting uh, opinions on him which I mean I guess this game is very subjective and up everyone's own opinion of what they want to do with the character you can build people however you want uh but i wanted to you know figure out a build that worked best for him and i think uh i've got him to a place where i find him absolutely to be insane uh and of course once i get higher into the game i can get even better gear and everything on him so let's go ahead first and talk about his skills so first skill here bewildering blow attacks one enemy has a 35 percent chance of placing a stun debuff for one turn damage is based off of defense uh, so nothing super special there, but he does get that stun on one enemy. So can be kind of useful in certain situations. Got him all the way booked up here. I did use my legendary books on him because at the time I had him and Trunda and I felt like the books would be more useful on him. So I used them there. So his debuff chance gets up to a uh, 50% chance of landing that stun. Uh, then moving over to a two wave of despair attacks three times at random. Each hit has a 75% chance to remove a buff. Places a provoke debuff for one turn if a buff is removed. This skill is very, very good. Uh, removing debuffs is super, or removing buffs is super helpful, especially like right now. Currently, there is the I, I've been using him, especially in the spirit keep right here. Spirit keep, she puts up a uh, shield, or I think it's a shield that uh, it just prevents her from taking any debuffs 
And so he just removes that with that A2 skill here, and then you're good to go. Everyone else is good to throw up their poisons and heal reductions and all that stuff. Uh, so that's what I've been using him for there. The Provoke also is just very useful because uh, he is a tanky guy, and the Provoke makes it so the opponents always are attacking him only. And then he's got a lot of, he's based off of build him off of defense and HP, uh, then he's going to be able to take a lot of hits. And then moving down to the Reign of Terror, this is his money move, in my opinion. This is his best attack that every time I use it, I'm just like, yes, that's, that's so satisfying. Uh, so it attacks all enemies, so it's an AoE attack, increases the duration of all debuffs on each target by one turn, then places a provoke debuff on all allies for one turn. Places a shield buff on this champion for two turns, equal to 30% of the damage inflicted. And then on top of that, the damage increases by 10% for each debuff on the target. So, I mean, there's so much to look at there. So first off, AoE, great, great thing to have there. Uh, and this is also on a four-turn cooldown once booked. Uh, something also to note, I, I again have him booked up all the way there. And plus he gets an increase on the shield. Uh, so uh, increases duration of all the debuffs. So you want to build him. It's in this. Is, I find it very useful in things like clan boss or dragon, where you're putting all these poisons on him, on the opponent, and this will increase those so they last just at least one turn longer. And by the time they are falling off, they're putting new poisons onto him, onto the opponent, the clan boss, and then he gets this back again. It just keeps going through that cycle. It's super super useful extending those debuffs. And on top of that, he places a provoke again, just like in the A2. In the A3, he puts the Provoke, and this time it's an AoE, so it puts it on everyone. So they're all attacking just him and allows your other champions to just nuke out and just go do go to town on the care on the enemies. Uh, and then the other thing too, places a shield buff on this champion turn uh, for two turns, equal to 30% of the damage inflicted. And then the last part, 10% for each debuff increases the damage. So that that that's the part that makes this hit so hard. So when you have them built up. On a team with all those poison dealers or defense a town defense down defense attack down all those debuffs on him that uh, 10 percent is going to increase all the way up for however many debuffs are on the opponent make him hit even harder and then the shield he puts on himself becomes even stronger based off of that demon off of that damage uh and then the provoke makes him so tanky so he has the shield up for the provoke so he's just not taking any damage again just allowing to your other characters to survive it's a very very big damage dealing and support style move in my opinion that i think is pretty underrated at least from what i've seen i've seen a lot of people talk about it and i think it's absolutely fantastic i'll showcase it in a little bit uh so and then lastly he has an aura that is ally defense in faction crypts so if it had been in all battles that have been a little bit better but just because it's faction crypts not super useful but hey it'll be it'll be useful once i get toward the end game of factions i'm sure and you know he's knight's revenant too so that'll just make him even better uh so there we go there is solace's skills guys let's go ahead and i'll show you what i've built him up for masteries so i'm a bit of a noob with masteries so i've gone back and forth i think i reset him originally when i set him up i saw oh he's based off of defense i probably want to build him up in defensive tree so that's what i did initially and honestly, I wasn't super impressed with him. I was kind of like, you know, it's not really doing much. And then uh, I looked over his skills again, and I saw on the A3 that he has that big shield. And then I was like, you know what? In the support tree, there's a lot of debuffs that enhance shields. So that's what I went with. In the support tree here, I've got all the abilities that enhance shields. So I think it's just mainly those two. Um, again, I'm kind of not 100% understand. I don't remember which masteries are which just yet. Uh, but that's what I have him built in to make that shield debuff even bigger. So when he uses that A3, he just becomes even more tanky. Uh, so it is super useful there. And then there is Lasting Gifts here. has a 30% chance to extend the duration of any buff cast by this champion. So potentially uh, refresh his shield buff there as well. Uh, so pretty useful stuff. And then kind of basic on the right side there. I, I probably, if I were to go change anything, I'd probably take this off. Uh, just because of the set that I have built on him right now. When I first did this, I didn't realize that it only affected base stat sets that increased by 15%. And as you see when we get to the artifacts, I haven't built up in all speed set since, and, and that just only increases by 12%. So this doesn't affect him there. I'd probably throw it into Evil Eye here. Uh, and then left side offense, just straight down the middle, down to uh, Warmaster there. So pretty uh, standard 
masteries, I feel like. Uh, but there you go. Artifact wise, I've built him up in as much speed as I could because he has a very, very low base speed uh, stat of 87. Um, and so I've got him built up to 177 now, almost 100% crit rate. I probably could probably try to improve that a little bit more. Crit damage, decent. Again, my count is still very young, so I don't have the most OP artifacts and everything yet still working on building my artifact collection i guess uh same with accuracy could be a little bit higher but it does enough for what i have but i wanted to try to get him his defense built up as high as i can almost but literally one point away from 3000 i could probably get it there if i have a glyph or something let's see one of these has I already have it on that one already have it on that one I haven't done much faction in this one. Defense, uh, let's 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 see. Maybe I, I kind of want to just get it right to three thousand. You know, it just sounds good. Uh, defense. Let's just do. Oh, oh, it's gonna go up multiple. Okay, that's fine then. We'll do that. So now it's over over three thousand. Uh, should be at least if my math is correct here. Um, hello, what are you doing there? X gonna go. There we go. All right. Total stats now 3,004. Perfect. Over 3,000 uh, defense. And again, his damage is all based off of defense. So that's why you want to build him there. So just go through them real quick. Uh, this is some of my best gear on my account, though, I will say, even though I said my stuff isn't great. Uh, crit rate here, three rolls on that. Absolutely awesome RNG on that. Uh, HP and accuracy. Accuracy, you want his accuracy up. Uh, then this one, I got the. 12% defense again 20% crit rate increase there um, which getting these two roll on crit rate allowed me to go with crit damage for my gauntlets this is one of my best items on my account probably uh, crit damage is awesome and then we've got him built in a defense chest of course going to be standard there and then speed boots with some more crit I uh, didn't really show this one real quick so HP this one eh, I could probably make get a better uh, shield here for him because flat HP isn't the best uh, but that's kind of what I've got him in right now and then uh, for the accessories again accessories I don't have a ton of accessories right now uh, that are super useful but I got some decent ones for him I did happen to get lucky and get a crit damage one here but again the rolls weren't super great uh, and then I think uh, resistance banner just because it was either that or this one so that's where I'm at right now with his stats so there it is guys that's how I recommend you build up your Solus. I, I went for speed, defense. You probably can go for something better. You guys probably know better than me, but that's just what I happen to go with what I've got on my account. So let's go ahead and get into a little bit of gameplay before we end off the video here. All right, so jumping on over into clan boss, you can see uh, my clan currently that I'm in, we're more of a beginner clan at this point, uh, at least the one that I'm in. I'm part of a family of clans and I'm in the lowest one right now. It's where I start. Uh, so building my way up once I can start uh, getting a bunch of the good box, a bunch of the uh, one king brutal. I'm sure at that point, I think is when we start being able to move up. Uh, so hard here, uh, I'll show you my team that I'm going to be using. Uh, this is a team I've been using lately, but I used to be using Solus. Uh, but after talking to some people in my clan, they said I should start taking Man Eater in here and building him up. But before I had Man Eater, this was my team. So I'm going to do one key. With using this team and showing you guys what we can do here. So just uh, if you haven't watched my uh, clan boss video I did recently, go check that out and kind of break down what each of these characters' roles are. Uh, but Solus's role on this team is, again, going to be using that A3 to keep up these guys' debuffs on. She puts the uh, defense down. He puts uh, poison, and Kale also puts poison down. Uh, so Solus just keeps extending those. Let's go ahead and start this battle and uh, we'll show you guys. I'll slow it down at the beginning. I'll do actually manual on this. I don't usually do manual. I usually just let it go. Uh, but let's go ahead and slow it down for you guys. All right. So here we go. Speed. All right, my uh, apothecary always goes first because I have him built up in very, very high speed. So increase everyone's speed. And then we have Solus, who actually is my second fastest, which probably isn't the smartest, but, you know, <laughs> I, I probably want to get some debuffs on him first. So when I do him on auto here, he usually does throw this right off the bat. But since I'm doing a manual, I'm just going to hit him with the A1 first. You can see right there, 21,000 damage. There was no debuffs or anything on there. And 21,000 damage, that's very, very solid. So then we've got, uh, what's his name here? A Colt Brawler going. And then we're going to hit him with the A1. Get some more poisons on him. Kale, we're going to use the A3 there. And oh wow, we didn't get lucky. Didn't get lucky there. Didn't get any debuffs. 
and then let's go ahead and he's about to hit us so let's get the defense attack or the decreased attack on him so when he hits us we're going to take less damage just use uh pop carries a1 there we go using the first one and we'll just do one more cycle try to get a couple more debuffs on him uh, let's go ahead he got that attack let's use that to remove his debuff there we go his attack increase went down uh cold brawler put some more poisons on him and then apothecary everyone's good on health let's use the a1 uh kale use his a1 as well get some more poisons use this defense down if it lands doesn't look like it landed uh probably need to increase her accuracy as well uh, let's go ahead uh another speed boost there and now we should be oh ne no next one one more time with uh there we go now we've got him let's increase all these devos so everything right here watch three one one four two two four two use the a3 and one thing also eighty thousand damage boom big hit because of all those increased now we are set up let's go ahead and throw it on auto increase it and i'll be back with you guys at the end of the fight and show you how much damage we do all right, we are getting to a close here. Uh, my rear guard sergeant fell. She is my weakest one on the team. She's only a five star at level 50. Uh, so she's usually the first one to go down, but she has done a huge help getting us this far. You can see we're up to uh, turn number 17, just crossed the 10 million mark. Uh, Kale and Solus, the last two survivors here. Solus is almost always the last one alive just because of these shields you can see how big those shields are he becomes such a tank and now we are down to the last one and usually he ends up getting those last couple rounds getting those poisons to fall off so there we go 20 turns a little over 11 million damage uh it's usually around where this team does 11 to 12 million i recently changed up a couple of my artifacts on kale so normally he's does a little bit more damage but you can see here solace he holds his own too doing at least uh, a little bit over 2 million himself uh, and yeah, so very, very solid showing for Solus there. And again, this was on hard. Again, I could probably increase this more if I had, uh, I don't even think I have masteries built up on rear guard sergeant, even if I had a level 60 as well. Uh, and just a couple of the things were different, but there we go. Pretty good showing for more of an early game, uh, clan boss. Obviously I'm not going to be having an unkillable build or anything like that yet. I do have the guys needed for that. Uh, so I'm working toward that down the road. Uh, but this is what I'm dealing with right now, and it's pretty solid because it very nicely uh, sets me up to get the amount of uh, rewards I need from the clan boss on the daily basis. So you can see here, now I am after, at the very top here after just using two keys for my clan right now. So very, very solid. So there you have it, guys. That is my guide on Solus. Let me know what you guys think. Did I uh, help you guys? Did I shine some light on this character? I hope so, guys, because... I'm sure there's some of you, like I said at the beginning, that pulled this guy recently uh, from the boosted summons and thought, oh, well, he just kind of looks all right. Uh, and maybe you're not doing anything with him. And then you see this and you're like, oh, maybe I want to invest into him. Uh, or maybe I'm totally off. Let me know either way down in the comments section below. Uh, I encourage you guys to go check out my other raid videos, guys. I'd love any support you guys want to give me. Uh, but also a huge shout out once again to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. And uh, guys, go if you want to check out the game. Again, if you're a brand new character, now is the best time to click that link, get some new awesome rewards, and get yourself a free epic defensive base, Sacred Order, Void Affinity, Light Sworn guy right here. Awesome, awesome guy for early game. Uh, but guys, that's going to do it for this one. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time. And lastly, I want to give one more shout out to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. If you guys haven't already, go into the description, download the game, if you're a new player to the game, you will be getting 100,000 silver and light sworn, guys. Brand new four star character you will receive onto your account. He will definitely help you out in the early stages of the game. Uh, this is only available for the next 30 days, remember though, so you need to get it now. Do it now. Hit the link in the description. Rewards will be up here in the corner waiting for you. But that's going to do it for this one, guys. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you next time.